a lot of times I think people want to believe there's a secret sauce to leadership. And I'm like, the secret sauce is the perseverance of somebody not giving up. If you want to know the secret sauce, you're not going to get picked most of the times. If you read most leadership yeah. books and you see most great leaders, you're yeah. like, oh, you were like the 10th or 11th. Yeah. Pick. You weren't the first draft. Uh, you have to persevere. You're not going to always be highlighted. You have to believe in yourself before people believe in you. And you have to keep showing up and doing the best you know how to do if no one sees it. And that is where the struggle comes in because I'm like, any anybody can do that. But not everyone chooses to do that because it's hard. Welcome to the second season of Cultural Catalyst, where we help you learn how to live fully alive, co-labor with God, and change the world. I'm your host, Chris Felton, and I have Rory. Now, I'm going to say Hellert. Did you I got get it right? Right, <laughs> right on. Well, it's there spelled it is. out phonoti- <laughs> phonetically here. Phonetically. <laughs> Tough, uh, long day. Phonetically right here, you're a certified life coach. and Well, I know you because you are the youth director of Young Saints here at Bethel. Yes. And you guys have like, how many kids do you have? Three kids, three little girls. How old are they? Seven, five, and three. Whoosh. I know. Man, you it's guys deep. took fruitful to multiply. And we multiplied. You, you, <laughs> you did You did good, my son. It's awesome. So uh, you're building a ministry. What inspired you to build leaders? You're, you're a youth pastor. Yep. But you love building leaders. Like, this is your passion. Yes. Well, obviously, working with you, too. Yep. What inspired you to focus on building leaders? Yeah, it's a great question. I, um, Being in youth ministry and just being leading teams and all of that kind of stuff, you realize I am only one person. And I only go so far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that rev- that that revelation hit pretty soon because I would say I'm naturally an introverted person. And so being put in places with a lot of people and being pulled on by a lot of people, I went, wow, I need other awesome people around me because I won't make it very far if I don't. And I think that started this journey in me to go, how do I help other people become awesome to where people could walk into a team that I'm leading and they wouldn't always know I'm the leader. And they might assume that somebody else is leading it because of how powerful the people are. And I kind of mess with some youth pastors when they come and visit our youth group. I, if I don't know if they come in and, you know, we have guests and groups come and that kind of stuff, I won't introduce myself as a youth pastor until a few, t- like a few leaders have come by and I'm like, Hey, who do you think is the youth pastor? And they'll actually name other people well, that approach them first. And they're like, Oh, for sure. That person's leading it. And I'm like, actually, you know, it's kind of fun. I'm actually the youth pastor here. And, uh, it's kind of been this thing, this journey in me that I'm like, I love big people. What does it mean to be a leader? You know, to me, simple yeah. Yeah. is people are following you. And so I wish a leader meant that you were a great leader. Well, yeah. But it doesn't. Um, but you can, a leader is just that somebody or multiple people are following you. And when you realize that, that most people are leaders, I think that also helps me in my development of people. Cause I'm like, well, everybody, somebody's following you. You're not aware of it. Somebody's watching you. Yeah, uh, it kind of gives the foundation of like everybody has leadership in them. Yeah, it's a, you know I was I I guess my next question for you I'll I'll partly answer myself too, and that is you know what's it mean to be a great leader? Because the truth is is that you can be a popular leader. Yeah, you know, i.e., well, we won't name anyone because we'll offend people, but you know, we know all these musicians and famous artists and who you know have millions of followers. Yes, quote followers. And uh, don't necessarily have great character, yep. uh, but they. Uh, in other words, I'm saying you you don't have to be a great leader to attract a ton of people. It's true. So, what does it mean to be a great leader from your perspective? Yeah, that's great. I would say a great leader is somebody that is building, developing, and promoting the people around them. Whoosh. And so, if I'm thinking of a great leader, 
I would go, I am intentionally building, developing, and promoting people around me and hopefully letting them go farther than I can go. And that's kind of been a dream of mine for years. It's I know that coming to Bethel, I came in mm. 2010, and obviously it's like yeah. a thing in our house here yeah, is like exactly. build big people, and you know we want our you know ceiling to be your floor. And I feel like I caught that and went, could I do that at 23 and 24? Can I think like that, or do I have to wait till I'm in my 40s? And I thought okay, I'm going to have to face a lot of insecurity. <laughs> I'm going to have to really go after my own insecurities totally. so that I could maybe become that person even in my 30s that could start launching people. And people would go, who are these people? And I would go, man, I'm so proud that I got to be a part of their story. Yeah, it, you know, I, I think that some people will be listening to this and they're like, I don't have insecurity. And it's like, well, if you surround yourself with little people, you won't have insecurity, it's true. right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's true. you know, work with the broken, work with the poor, which we should, by the way, we should, yep. and we do at Bethel, we do. But if you hang out with with people who are obviously broken and 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 yes. and you know, I'll say little people, not not insignificant people, but little from the standpoint that they're they're broken and they're yep. they're not influential. You probably aren't going to feel insecure. Probably, it probably makes you feel secure. Actually, yes, you that, actually feel like a great leader. Yeah. Yes, and then you think you're doing everything right, and then yeah. you're like, oh no, I, I. It's true when when you can get people that are better at you mm. at most things. This is why I try to find them. Yeah. I'm really good at like one or two things. Yeah, and then I have a whole team of people that I'm like, wow, you are so much better at that than I am. <laughs> so I need you, yeah. and that's been the change for me. Is to go. I look for people that I'm like, I don't have that. Yeah. at all. Uh, people are going to highlight that. And people do. People come into our world and they're highlighting stuff that I'm like, I know that's not me. What do you like? Okay. So I have the same situation. I am. Uh, I have no education. I, I'd say I'm a person of average intelligence. I have a lot of drive, a lot of perseverance. So I, I, I don't quit like too legit to quit. <laughs> um, you know, so, but I, I, I find that the a high percentage of the people around me are a lot better than me yeah at a lot of things more educated you know better with things even that i have a passion than i have you know that i have a passion for like yes. actually better yes and and uh and so i find my own it does push your buttons right it does like you, you know, at some point, like, what am I good at? Or, you know, or it's like, oh, I love doing this. And it's like, well, you know, I love playing basketball. Yeah, you're just not very good at it. Yeah. And, and you know, being bad at something, not being good at something you don't care about. One thing. Yeah. Yes. Not being the best at something you care a lot about. Very difficult. Very difficult. What do you do with your insecurity? It's great. What do you honestly do with your What career? I honestly do. I mean, take me through it. Like, yeah, this is the, you, my process. I, I'm, I'm in your world, yes. let's say, and you love doing X, Y, Z. Maybe you love preaching. I'll, I'll, I'll take you through that. I'll do that. So I'll okay. be the youth pastor. I love communicating. Yeah. Probably one of my most challenging things I do. And obviously our kids are going to be like, you're great. That was awesome. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Thank you. But you know, you're 14. Um, and I love it. Love the compliments, but it's probably one of the hardest things I do is actually communication is getting the thoughts and feelings that I have out in words, in words yeah. that make sense Yeah, exactly. to think very hard about it. And I have people on our team that are naturals. One being my wife, natural communicator, very is good she? natural. Like I've heard she she's a great can, preacher, great preacher. She can think about something, craft the words and knows exactly what she's doing. And I'm like, I, it but took, she is woman. Yeah. She uses more she, words. She uses more <laughs> words all the time. So I'm like, it's an unfair advantage. Yeah. She can access her emotions faster. Yeah. She can use words faster. Really good at it. Um, and we have other people, like there's another guy on our team named Jordan Young. Great communicator. Very, so much charisma that pulls kids in, yeah. pulls people in. Yeah. And me, I'm like, man, I, it took me all week to come up with this thing. And 
when I was starting to empower people to speak, because this is when it started again, I yeah. thought I wasn't, I'm like, I don't have insecurities about communicating. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. You start empowering people to speak and everyone's like, they're, they're the best speaker <laughs> we know. have. Exactly. Man, Roy, I got to tell you, tonight was the best message I've ever, ever heard in young since. I like, have I'm been like, changed forever. Awesome, you know, I was like, like Frick, right? right? Yeah. Like, thank you so much for yeah. that. Yeah. And, from that, what I started doing, and I started this um, about, I would say, five years ago, I started this thing in my life that took a big jump for me. And I thought, I want, I want a few people, two or three, to know everything about me. And can I actually let somebody in enough to where they know my whole past, present, fears, insecurities, dreams, everything? And... I'm not a natural person to go there. And I thought I need to do you're this. Not, I felt, you're not, uh, you're not a, a transparent by, by nature. No, I, I have to work at transparency. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. I'm a, a very intense person and I'm a, a high eight driven, just keep it all here person. Yeah. And so I thought I'm going to, I'm going to crash. If I keep having this pressure and insecurity, it's causing so much anxiety. And when I keep showing up to believe in these people, because I want to make big people, yeah, I feel like I'm hitting a wall <laughs> inside of me. It's called Rory. <laughs> yes, and I'm trying to get over it. Yeah, and I thought I got to get over this, and so I just started pulling people aside and telling them every everything. I was like, "Here's everything I've ever done. Here's everything I've ever thought. Here's my greatest fears. Here's my greatest insecurities about my own leadership. Here's what I love about my leadership. Here's what I think I'm really good at, and here's what I wish I was better at." And I did that with a couple of people and instantly I started going, man, I feel so free. But you kind of confessed your, not your sin. Not, but your yeah, weakness. but your weakness. And I yeah. could go, oh, it's okay. And they're like, yeah, yeah no, that, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, it is actually okay. And I can still speak and communicate and give it my best and go every time. And that's okay. And when I got over that, it doesn't mean you never get insecure. It's just so much easier to do something with it. You yeah. have people that you're like, oh man, hey, I got a little weird, like, I felt it in that moment. I don't want to mm. feel that. I don't want that insecurity to stop me from empowering people, yeah. believing in people. And uh, and especially because that I, I feel like there's the correlation where you start getting a small team. Yeah. And I always know, I'm like, if I am not at some level, like, wow, I'm in awe of the team around me. I'm a little intimidated. You guys are awesome. Like mm. any yeah. one of you can do my job better. I'm probably not raising up the right people. Yeah, it's hard. I, I mean, I have the same issue, and uh, you know, uh, I, at, there are times when my emotions are going north to fear and insecurity mode. Yes, and I'm like, I will go south. Yes, I will empower them again. I will put them in the podium again. Yep, I will not let this emotion of, well, what are who, who's going to follow me? Yes, uh, you know, dominate. I'll tell you, like growing up with Bill Johnson's, uh, you know, obviously amazing, obviously amazing. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't want to just say the obvious, like it's obviously amazing, you know, like where would I be if it wasn't for Bill Johnson? I'd be still working on cars and, you know, you know, building auto parts stores. Yeah. But being with the, in my opinion, one of the best charismatic preachers of all time. Yes. And often following him. Yes. Is not easy. Writing books when you have somebody who's a more popular author is yeah. not easy. And how many times people come up and go, man, I love Bill Johnson. He writes the best books. His life's changed. <laughs> and I'm like, I've written 15 books. <laughs> Here, give Bill this note. Yeah, okay. Thank you. you know, Bill's message is, I just listen to all of his podcasts. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, you, you just have to, I mean, I just, I just refuse to not be loyal to Bill. And yeah. I'm still do my best to work through those, push through those. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't, I think the difference between a good leader and a great leader is what you do with your insecurity, to yeah. be honest. No, a hundred percent. There's something about it that it makes or break how you believe in people, what you do, totally. how you empower. Yeah. All of it, how you show up. Totally. You can always tell when somebody's insecure, which is the worst because 
it is so obvious, even if they're trying to hold it. Yeah. I think I know that I've said, I'm like, I've been that person. Oh, I and am you that, are person that person sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, if you, if I see that you look like that, yeah. that's what I look like. Yeah. If I don't take care of this, even if I think I'm hiding it. Sometimes the most insecure person in the room is the person telling you how amazing they are. Yes. Right. Yes. Hey, who's had the biggest impact on you and your leadership? Like who's molded you? You know, I've had a variety of people. Mm -hmm. I would say two people that have molded a lot of who I am as a person would be Tom and Leslie Crandall. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, yeah they're amazing. People. They, I was 19 when I moved to Utah and I was there for two years. That's how I met the Crandalls. Ah. And I was a very intense, very like strongly opinionated, no boundaries, no grid for leadership, but thought I had a great grid for leadership person. And they had, yeah, they helped me through so much of molding me. Um, even when I was like, I don't like you guys. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, and we're like clashing. Absolutely. Like, it's not like, yeah. you know, everyone's like, how have you guys stayed together so many years? I mean, you guys just must get along so well. And I'm like, oh, it has not been without the seasons of yeah, clashing. That's Bill and I too. Absolutely. Like strong to yeah. work out. Like it's hard to become who you're supposed to become. That doesn't just happen easy. That is like strong. So they staying with me, believing in me, going through hard seasons where I just had stuff coming up yeah. that needed to get worked through, but I didn't always know how to work through it. And one of those was like, I, I thought I was right. I had su I have such a <laughs> confident, I'm such a confident decision maker. Bro, that could be called arrogance once in a while too, right? I know, when I know. When you're young, When you're young, I've been called arrogance, arrogant more than once where <laughs> it was like, and Tom and Leslie helped go, no, 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 you have a great gift of decision making and confidence. You just need to make sure that you know other people have great ideas too. Like yeah. You have to get that. You have a great gift of confidence. You're just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. more of the commentary on my life. Yeah. I just don't know what you're talking about. But yeah. at least you, when you actually know what you're talking about, you are going to be a great man of God. That's, <laughs> that's, that's all. That was, me. you know, that's probably how they thought a few times about me with stuff I would say and do for them. And I was like, and now I look back, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I almost like took mm -hmm. you guys out multiple times. <laughs> so they would be too. And then I would say, those are like probably more like hands-on people yeah. that we've walked yeah, through exactly. life with and they married us and all that. Um, and then I would say a couple other people that have been very inspirational for me, but I, I take stuff with a grain of salt. I think yeah. something, I don't know if you've found this, but I love leadership books and yeah, leadership me too. all this. I love them too. I love them. When I pull some of the stuff though and apply it to like a ministry, I'm like, wow, this does not work quite the yeah, same as yeah. like- We're great for them though. Yes, works great for the business. Like when you yeah. can have like structure that yeah. doesn't change with different, yeah, variations, yeah. it works. But one of the guys, Simon Sinek, I love Simon Sinek and I love John Maxwell. I love Maxwell. And yeah. I, I don't love, know Simon Sinek. So. so Simon Sinek is like, it's like he's taken Maxwell because I've read almost all of John yeah, Maxwell's books me too. And he's come in as a millennial voice and going, I love what John Maxwell's doing. You know, millennials, here's how you partner with it. And he has helped me, like I'm a millennial. Yeah. He has helped me bridge the gap of how to apply a lot of John C. Maxwell and, and how John Maxwell thinks. Yeah. Cause sometimes I would read stuff and go, that is so good, but I don't know how, I don't know how to apply that. <laughs> Simon Sinek has helped me a lot. Simon says? Yeah, Simon says. Simon <laughs> says, share a testimony that where you've seen a team member step into their calling and make a significant impact. That's a great question. I didn't write that question, but I it's, think a it's a great, great question. question. You know, I have a variety of people that come to mind as I think of that. Um, one being there was, uh, I had a, probably it was the year of 2020 because we the whole school yeah. went online and yeah, i had third years terrible. that was quite the year God, um, that was a, yeah i didn't want to trigger I'm you PTSD <laughs> you just bring it i don't up. want to trigger you i start to sweat yeah the year of 2020 was a yeah interesting year i had two third years and um that i took and obviously and they right when we took them <laughs> one of them just made a big mess right before third year started and for me, I one of so these, rare. We, I know, so rare. So few of our students have make problems. Misses. Yeah, yes. It's a, this was a unique scenario. No, <laughs> something I love though. Part of how I 
view leadership is I think if I have somebody that makes a big mess to me, I'm like, this is about to be the best opportunity to yeah. develop this person if they want it. Yeah, if they want it. If they want it. Mm. If they don't, it, then it's a wash and I'm so sorry. But if yeah. they do, I have found some of my strongest people and the people that get launched are ones that I found in one of their worst seasons and I believed in them and walked yeah, with them. Absolutely. And this guy was one of them and made a big mess, but he was like, I will do whatever it takes to get trust back with third year with you and walk. We did the whole process, um, walked through and he was then on our team for a couple of years, ended up marrying him and his wife. They met under me. We walked wow. through their whole dating, did their pre-marriage, got married. And then he had this big desire. He actually ran Hebrews, ran the kitchen. He got hired on at Bethel. Then after wow. third year, did Bethel Tech and works for Ramsey Solutions, actually. Wow. And it was so, his big great dream. He, yeah. He like has such a desire to help people in ministry, learn how to do finance well. So he's becoming a finance coach underneath Ramsey. And it was, it's was it been so cool to watch when I met him. It was like, you would have thought there's no chance this young guy has a bright future with all this stuff against him. Really rough home life, rough scenarios that had happened when he was younger and a lot of things working against him. And then him making some very stupid decisions. Taking that and going, hey, bro, I believe in you. I see there's so much in you. If you say yes and you actually walk with me, man, I think there's a lot that can unlock. And it just started there. And we just met consistently. And I would say he's one that I just, I love that. And he, we still, he texts me all the time. Him and his wife are doing great. And it's a win because he was like, I never thought I'd get married. Like when we met, it was like <laughs> marriage was such a yeah. rough thing because yeah. of, you know, yeah, worried, upbringing man. and all that. And so it was, it was awesome. Another one I think of is actually, um, she's in this room right now, actually, Tori. She uh, was my third year a while ago. And she came into our environment and was just like, I love God. I want to be in ministry, but I have, I've only had chances of ministry and I haven't really been developed. And it's been fun to see the process where we've, she's, come in we hired her in young saints then like five years ago to be our administrator and just started developing her to start leading at a high level she started running our events um, from me i was the event director for years in young saints and it was such a joy to pass it on and then have everyone go this was another leadership moment people are like wow events are running so much smoother now that tori took them over you know and i was like thank you yeah i i did them before her for seven years but i get it she so she's gifted too by the way very she's gifted, gifted too way better than yeah. i was and i instantly noticed the leadership level and then in this last season just like seven eight months ago moved to the events department and now just became the events director for bethel church ah, thriving. and doing amazing and i look at that thriving. and i'm like it's so fun to see what God can do when you just believe in somebody, give them opportunities, sometimes before they're ready, and watch them succeed. And it is, yeah, it's that joy. I'm like, that to me is the joy of leadership, is seeing people that you've like given your life to do something great with it. That's amazing. And you're like, that's awesome. And yeah. And the first guy went through Bethel School of Technology. He did Bethel Tech. He did three right years. There, Bethel School did of Technology. Bethel Tech. Change your life. Yes. Get a, a coding cer certification and change the world. Yep. It's it's awesome. I've, I've actually Ramsey, had a couple of leaders go guys. through. Yeah. Ramsey is amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've had a, a few leaders go through Bethel Tech and they love it. Most Pretty challenging cool. thing about building leaders is? Um, I can't control people. <laughs> most challenging thing. So I We um, should be able to though. <laughs> you know, only That's sometimes my old style was so much easier. Only sometimes. Yeah. Though. Uh I, the biggest challenge in leadership for me is that I I see potential in people. Like I feel like I can look at somebody and yeah. I'm like, man, I see yep. so much potential yep. in you. There's so much greatness inside of you. The gifts are so evident but I can't control your yes mm -hmm. and I can't control your motivation and I can't control whether you show yeah. up and I can't control if you believe it. And I think that has been one of the, the things I've had to be aware of the most in my leadership is not trying to force my own beliefs to mm -hmm. control a person into their destiny, but to just go, okay, I can be a, I can believe in you. I'm for you, but I cannot do it for you. 
Free will is a powerful thing, you know, right? Because Jesus wills that we'd go to heaven. Right. But free will means that you could still choose hell. Yes. Um, people will say things like, well, well, why would a loving God send you to hell? Send me to hell? It's like, <laughs> loving God said, over my dead body. Yes. Yeah. Over my dead body. But you still can step over. You can over. still step over it. As Hebrews says, you could step over the blood of Christ into into eternal destruction, not because of what you want, but because of what you will. Uh, and that, and I feel like I, I will tell people, I'm like, a lot of times I think people want to believe there's a secret sauce to leadership. And I'm like, the secret sauce is the perseverance of somebody not giving up. If you want to know the secret sauce, you're not going to get picked most of the times. If you read most leadership yeah. books and you see most great leaders, you're yeah. like, oh, you were like the 10th or 11th. Yeah. Pick. You weren't the first draft. Uh, you have to persevere. You're not going to always be highlighted. You have to believe in yourself before people believe in you. And you have to keep showing up and doing the best you know how to do if no one sees it. And that is where the struggle comes in because I'm like, any anybody can do that. But not everyone chooses to do that because it's hard. Exactly. Like leadership is not easy because you're like, it's not influence. That's not the same thing. And I yeah. think in our culture, influence has so taken the scene. People are like, oh, there's a million views on that YouTube. Boom. Let's get them in. Let's talk to them. What What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah. that could have been a kid that threw on his camera, did something mm -hmm. yeah. stupid. And yeah. you're like, wait, what? You're, you sing songs. You must know everything, everything. about everything. And that has, I would say, a challenge in leadership, even as I lead and empower a lot of Gen Z and millennials, mm -hmm. is we are raised with this constant picture of what leadership is in the name of influence. And everyone's like, oh, look at how many followers. And we celebrate it. We're like, oh my gosh, look at how many followers. Look at our reach. Look at this. Look at that. That's amazing. And I'm going, you know what's more amazing? Show up to work on time. <laughs> consistently be exactly. there, be faithful, do what God's asked you to do and let the Lord promote you and become an actual leader, not an influencer. And I just think there's such a desire towards influence yeah, totally. because it's easy with social media to feel like you're significant through it, but it's not actually changing people's lives. And I'm like, I can't, I don't remember the last time a post impacted my life. I had thoughts about posts, mm -hmm. I had my own opinions yeah. about everything I've seen. Yeah. It is not. It has not been where I'm like, oh wow, that that changed my life. But the interaction of people, the faithfulness, totally. the behind the scenes, the stuff that nobody sees, which you know, I mean, yeah. you've been in leadership for yeah. years, where it's not always since been Christ cool. came back since the first Christ time. Came back the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, you know, it was there was a we were talking about um, in the church staff meeting actually last week and you came up because we were talking about just where we're at as Bethel and, and yeah. believing for God for the breakthrough for our building and all this stuff. Yeah. And somebody brought up, they were like, I think it was Donna De Silva. She said, I remember a time though, when Chris and her husband, Steve and yeah. Bill and all Charlie Harper, they, we didn't have the finances at Bethel. There wasn't money coming in and in faith they believed and they had to, go through hard seasons where they almost couldn't pay the bills. And when I think of that in your life, I'm like the way that you have displayed actual leadership to go, we have a mass. I mean, people come to Bethel and they're like, oh, wow, this is so cool. I Is that a building? Is it this? And I'm like, no, it's because we have people that chose in a season of hiddenness to not give up. Because when mm -hmm. it was really hard, and no one's was looking, no eye, there was no Instagram. Nobody was going, you guys are going to change the world. This is so crazy. It's going to be all over. Like, yeah, there's prophetic words, but like, it's not like it's happening. Yeah. And in that season, there was faithfulness and we get to eat the fruit of your leadership. And I think I want that. And even being in a generation where it is easy to bypass that, I yeah. don't think it creates longevity because sooner or later, you're going to hit the valley that you have to persevere in. And if you haven't cultivated that, mm -hmm. I think it's why we're seeing leaders just crash. And they're like, I'm like, oh, you didn't cultivate perseverance in times that it were that it was lean totally. to get through it. Yeah, suffering and perseverance, definitely a part of the gospel. One more question, last question. What does it mean to be a cultural catalyst? 
from your perspective? I like this question. Um, to me, I'd say if I think of a catalyst, I think of like an agent that's placed into other substances and catalyzes and creates something that wouldn't be possible. Yeah. And so if I think of a cultural catalyst, I'm like, it is a person that chooses to go against the norm, thinks different, has different ideas, isn't afraid to get persecuted for the different ideas to create change for the good. And to go, hey, I know that there, everybody's been going one way, but that way is leading to a cliff. Now I can either let people go that way or I can step in and create a new way. And it's gonna be painful. People are gonna run into me. They're, gonna, they're, they're not gonna like it. There's gonna be resistance, but I'm aware, man, I'm a change agent. That means it's gonna be pressure. It's gonna maybe explode. It's gonna create a reaction, but I'm actually going to affect culture. Um. Yeah, I think cultural catalysts are disruptive, right? They are. We are disruptive. Rory, thanks so much for being on. How can people get in touch with you? You yeah. want to give me your private cell phone number? Yeah, right now. It's <laughs> five to, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you go on Instagram, I've got an Instagram. It's just Rory Hellert, R-O-R-Y-H-E-L-A-R-T. Super fun, uh, simple. And then we also have a Youth Pastors and Leaders Network that I run. So if you go to youngsaints.com, you will see it. It's one of the pages. And we do a lot of coaching sessions with youth pastors, leaders, different things uh, to really inspire young leaders to be awesome. Cool. Uh, we'll put the link down in the comment section. God bless you. Thanks for being on. And see you next week.